Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling for September 19th, 2013. I am watching the show damn near live. It is paused right now, so it's building up a little because I do want to skip the commercials. But yeah, I'm going to get this one up early this time. I appreciate the patience. I know I've been late with some of these videos. Um, so the show starts off with... Magnus getting beat up by Ego. I guess this was after the show last week. I mean, technically, this is all one big show. Uh, but storyline-wise, I think it was after the match with AJ. So they beat him up. So this week, Magnus comes out. He calls out any member of Ego. And Kazarian runs down, and Magnus starts taking him down. Daniels runs out. Magnus beats him up, so Bobby Roode runs out. And they all beat down Magnus. Samoa Joe and Sting come out to make the save, and Sting says, we want to challenge you guys to a six-man tag match tonight. Uh, then backstage, Chris Sabin is with Velvet Sky, and he's talking to Manic, and they're definitely turning him heel. <laughs> but the funny thing is, he's talking to Manic, and he's like, man, I'm a former world champion, it's no big deal, but... Um, I'm really happy for all your success. You're the X Division champion, but if it wasn't for me paving the way and uh, making something out of the X Division title, you probably wouldn't be here right now. You probably wouldn't have a contract. So he's definitely in heel mode. But the funny thing is, Manic is like, look, dude, I got to go get ready for my match. <laughs> like, Saban doesn't really matter anymore. And that's what it came across like to me is that Saban was something. And now he's not, and nobody really cares except for Saban. So I don't know where they're going with this, but he's definitely turning heel. And he says he's going to be out there to watch the Manic's match later. All right, so it's Jeff Hardy versus Manic with Saban and Velvet at ringside. Uh, match was okay, kind of short. Hardy wins with the twist of fate in the Swanton, beats Manic clean. Afterwards, Hardy raises Manic's hand and goes to leave. Saban gets in the ring, he raises Manic's hand, acts like he's leaving, turns around and attacks Manic from behind, uh, puts the boots to him, Hardy runs out, chases Saban out of the ring, and Saban's just like, oh, oh. So, it was alright for what it was. But Saban's a heel now, and I guess he's back in the X Division. And then we see Dixie Carter has arrived at the arena, and she pulls up in a truck driven by Tony from Atlas. <laughs> Saban's backstage. He says that he's accomplished a lot in his TNA career, but no one respects him. So he's going to take his respect from the wrestlers, from the fans. Um, he's just going to take back his respect. And then we get ODB versus Mickey James. This match was okay. Um, ODB wins with a TKO, beats Mickey James clean, so we get a new Knockouts champion. Eric Young and Joseph Park come out to celebrate with ODB, and the Bromans show up, and they make fun of them, say they're a group of freaks, and Robbie E wants a match against Joseph Park, but Eric Young says, hey, Park's in a suit, so I'll wrestle you, and... They have the match, kind of. Robbie E. charges Eric Young. He moves out of the way. Robbie E. hits the turnbuckles. Eric Young rolls him up, gets the win in like five seconds. So then Robbie E. says, you know what? I wanted Joseph Park, not Eric Young. So they have a match again with Joseph Park versus Robbie E. Same thing happens. Park rolls him up, beats him in like five seconds. So the Bromans attack them from behind. They lay out Eric Young. They throw Joseph Park into the ring post, and they go back to beating down Eric Young. And then the camera just cuts to Joseph Park in the ring busted open. Which is funny because at the same time it says hashtag impact live at the top of the screen. So Park is busted open, he choke slams Robbie E, hits the black hole slam on Jesse or vice versa, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. Um, so he lays him out, and then Eric Young's like, Holy shit. And then Joseph Park snaps back to reality and he's normal again. Why is Joseph Park the only one who ever gets busted open? I know that's his gimmick. He sees his own blood, so he freaks out. He actually becomes someone who's strong, uh, like Abyss, instead of the weak comedy character. 
but he's the only one who's ever bleeding. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of silly. But and another thing I heard was that Mickey James might be leaving TNA, and I think that really sucks if they lose her. Um, she's one of the biggest stars they have in the Knockouts division, and I also heard that they had to cancel a couple house shows in Texas, and that is not a good sign. The Aces and Eights come out. Um, Bully Ray says that he's still the world champion. And it's all thanks to Brooke Tessmacher. Not the Aces and Eights. Not the guys who have helped him keep the title all this time. But Brooke Tessmacher. So they all get pissed off. Wes Briscoe says something. Gare Bischoff says something. And Bully Ray's just like, shut up. I'll slap you in the face. It's three on one, and last week he was afraid they were going to turn on him. Why is he being such a dick to him tonight? So Nuxy grabs a microphone, says, When we started this club, we had 25 members. Now we're down to four. I guess he forgot about Taz. And he says that it was supposed to be for the good of the club, but it's really just for the good of you. And he says, The first rule of this club was bros before hoes. Bully Ray pushes him, says he'll knock his head off if he calls her a hoe and Nuxie gets in his face and Bully's like, hey, we gotta go, we gotta go and he leaves with Miss Tessmacher It's supposed to be Gunner and James Storm versus Chavo and Hernandez and if Chavo and Hernandez can beat them, they get a title shot in the future but Chavo comes out and he's like, oh man, my leg is messed up, I haven't been medically cleared but Gunner still wants to fight so it's Gunner versus Hernandez Match was okay, I guess. I just didn't really care about this. Gunner wins with a backbreaker. That was about it. Ego versus the main event Mafia. Before the match starts, Sting goes to the back and gets the baseball bat. I don't know why. It's three on three. And I've said before that it doesn't really feel like the main event Mafia is actually feuding with the Aces and Eights. And I guess they're not anymore. But if that's the case, they just they don't really have a purpose now. They're just kind of there. And it's only three guys now, too. So the match was okay. Um, a lot of the Hills getting the heat on Sting. Uh, they beat him down for a very long time. Sting eventually gets Christopher Daniels in the Scorpion Deathlock. And Bobby Roode runs in with the baseball bat to hit Sting. And Magnus jumps in the way and shields Sting. So Magnus gets hit with the bat. And Rude covers Magnus for the win. So Ego went over here. AJ Styles comes out. And he starts shooting on Dixie Carter. Saying that he helped build TNA with a band of brothers to put this company on the map. Dixie came in. She had no wrestling experience. Ruined what made TNA great. And he just goes off on her. Dixie comes out and she's like, I'm sorry, AJ. Sorry I ever let you think you were important to this company. I can't remember the last time you had a five-star match. You're not the phenomenal one. You're the marginal one. And she goes off on AJ. And as she's leaving, AJ says, Dixie, you can stick that microphone up your ass or something to that effect. And Dixie has his mic cut off, and she says, Cut the lights off, the show is over, the lights go out, and the show ends. Um, I know a lot of people are going to make fun of Dixie's acting skills here and how AJ Styles can't really cut a promo, but I like this, and honestly, this was the best thing on the show this week. I thought, overall, this week's episode was pretty average, maybe a little below average. Besides this, I can't think of anything that was good on this show. Um, the matches were okay, nothing really special, just a very, very average show. Nothing really good. But I did like the way they ended it. It's something a little different in TNA. And what I think is going to happen, I think AJ is going to face Bully Ray at Bound for Glory. And the Aces and Eights is pretty much over at this point. So I think the Aces and Eights are going to come out. Bully Ray is going to expect them to help him. They're not going to do it. The locker room's going to come out. Everybody's going to stand around the ring and cheer on AJ Styles. He's going to defeat Bully Ray and become the new world champion. And it will be the end 
of the Aces and Eights. That's the way I see things playing out at Bound for Glory. And with AJ as champion, they may do something kind of like what they're doing with Triple H and WWE, where Dixie Carter is like this egomaniac now. Um, but anyways, that's my review of the show this week. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments, and thanks for watching.